Hi everyone, it's Derek here from Adumed. Welcome to today's video based on lower urinary tract symptoms. We will be looking specifically at BPH and overactive bladder. We will cover cancer in a separate video. During the next few minutes, we will learn how to assess and manage these patients. So let's dive straight in. Lower urinary tract symptoms can be classified as the following. Storage symptoms such as increased urinary frequency, nocturia, and urge incontinence. These symptoms usually point to an overactive bladder. Voiding symptoms such as hesitancy, straining, poor stream. These symptoms suggest BPH or outflow obstruction. And post symptoms such as terminal dribbling, feeling of incomplete emptying. The underlying cause of such symptoms are usually chronic retention due to dilation of the urethra. So assessing such patients will include examining the abdomen to look for bladder enlargement and appear to also examine the prostate. The IPSS score can be used. This is a validated symptom score recommended by NICE to allow for assessment of symptom severity. NICE also recommend the use of a urine frequency volume chart, which helps to distinguish between frequency, polyuria and nocturia. Investigations include urinalysis and blood, including using ease. NICE suggests a PSA for all men presenting with lower urinary tract symptoms. A PSA should also be considered if the patient has a preference for this test or is concerned about prostate cancer. All men should be counselled appropriately about the test before having it. Managing lower urinary tract symptoms in a conservative way includes giving advice on fluid intake. Patients should avoid constipation and can consider the use of incontinence pads. Urethral milking is also suggested for men with post-micturition dribbling. Bladder training is helpful for patients with overactive bladder or storage symptoms. Patients can also be referred to the local continence nurse for supervised bladder training. Now we can look at medical management of these symptoms. Starting off, we will look at our approach if BPH is determined to be the cause of these symptoms. First line treatment includes alpha blockers, such as tamsulosin, which should be offered in men with moderate to severe voiding symptoms if conservative measures are not appropriate. These medications work by relaxing the smooth muscle of the prostate. So common side effects include dizziness, postural hypotension and fatigue. 5 alpha reductase inhibitors are generally used for men with enlarged prostates of more than 30 grams. This is roughly the size of a golf ball. Examples include finasteride and dutasteride. They work by blocking the conversion of testosterone to DHT, therefore reducing the size of the prostate. They also work much slower than alpha blockers and can take three to six months till any improvement is seen. They can be used either on their own or in combination with alpha blockers. 5-alpha reductase inhibitors can cause up to a 50% decrease in PSA levels. These will return to the baseline 6 months after stopping this medication. It is therefore important to take this into consideration when reviewing the PSA blood results of patients on finasteride. Now, due to its mechanism of action and involvement in testosterone metabolism, Common side effects of these medications include impotence, reduced libido, gynecomastia, and ejaculatory dysfunction. Anticholinergics can also be added to an alpha blocker if a man has a mixed picture with both storage and voiding symptoms that persist despite the use of an alpha blocker. These work by blocking the parasympathetic nerves which stimulate bladder contraction. Examples include oxybutynin, tolteridine, 
Sully Fenison and Diophenison. A common side effect of this type of medication is a dry mouth. If the above methods don't work for the patient, then it's probably worth considering onwards referral to urology for a surgical procedure, known as a TERP. If the patient's lower urinary tract symptoms are shown to be due to an overactive bladder, anticholinergics such as oxybutynin can be used. However, it's important to not offer oxybutynin to frail older men due to the risk of impairment of daily functioning. Mirabegrin can be used if there is no response to anticholinergics or if these are inappropriate as outlined earlier on. Thanks for watching this video. If you found this helpful and would like to watch more videos like this, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as this will really help my channel to grow.